Hey guys, it's Tim Hills here from Hills Media. I hope you guys have been well. Today I'm going to be doing an in-depth review on the FeelWorld F6 Plus 5.5 inch 3D LUT 4K touchscreen monitor. Without any further delay, let's roll that montage. All right, so here we have the Feel World F6 5.5 inch 4K touchscreen monitor. It has a touchscreen size of 5.5 inches, which has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels. The screen's ratio is 16 by nine with a brightness of 500 candelas squared or 6,285 lumens. To compare the brightness with some other external monitors out there, the Atmos Ninja V has a brightness of 1000 nits, which equals 3246 lumens. Or the small HD Focus 5 has a brightness of 800 nits, which equals 2740 lumens. So to sum it up, the Field World F6 Plus has plenty of brightness for many different conditions, which can be adjusted. The color gamut on this monitor is 16.7M in 8-bit. The contrast ratio is 1000 to 1. The monitor is backlit via LED and it has a viewing angle of 80 degrees left and right and 80 degrees up and down. Its operating temperature is minus 20 degrees Celsius to 55 degrees Celsius. The unit size is 148 millimeters long by 93 millimeters high and 20 millimeters deep and weighs 235 grams without a battery. The HDMI input and output formats supported are 480i, 576i, 480p, 576p, 1080i, in 60, 59.94 and 50 frames per second, 720p, in 60, 59.94, 50, 30, 29, 25, 24 and 23.98 fps, 1080p, in 60, 59.94, 50, 30, 29.97, 25, 24, 23.98 frames per second, and 24 SF with 23.98 SF. 4K UHD at 3840 by 2160p at 30, 29.97, 25, and 24 frames per second at 23.98 Hz. With 4K UHD 4096 by 2160p at 24 Hz. The Fieldworld F6 Plus monitor will also come with a micro HDMI to HDMI cable, a sunshade, a manual, and a hot shoe mountable tilt arm, which also has a shoe mount of its own for accessories like a microphone, LED light, or wireless receiver. On the left hand side of this monitor, you have a HDMI input, which allows you to connect your camera to the monitor itself. We also have a HDMI output which allows you to run external monitors from this monitor or external wireless HDMI transmitters. We also have a DC out 8 volt plug which allows you with the help of a dummy battery power your camera via the battery on the back of the monitor. On the bottom of the monitor you have an SD card slot on your left to import LUTs and firmware upgrades. Next to the SD card slot you have a DC in 12 volt input allowing you to power the monitor without an external battery. In the center, you have a quarter inch screw mount allowing you to mount the monitor on an external stand. To the right, you have a stereo headphones out allowing you to adjust your levels accordingly. To the far right, we have a DC in 5 volt type C USB input for external power. On the top of the monitor to the left hand side, you have the power on button. In the center, you have a quarter inch screw mount which allows you to mount your monitor to an external stand. On the right hand side you have the menu dial allowing you to access various functions of the monitor itself and to also access the menu tabs. On the right of the monitor you have a quarter inch screw mount allowing you to connect the hot shoe mountable tilt arm. The tilt arm will swivel vertically without having to loosen the screw which is great as the monitor is always secure. To ensure that the monitor is properly and securely mounted to the tilt arm the screen has two little indentations that accepts the two little prongs on the tilt arm itself. On the rear of the monitor, it has a built-in 2-in-1 battery plate compatible with Sony F-Series batteries 
and Canon LP E6 batteries. This can allow you long working times with different size batteries that are easily able to be swapped out when one goes flat. The runtime per battery depends on the size of battery and the functions that you have active on your monitor. I have the Bonacell NP F960 slash F970 7.2 volt 8700 milliamp battery and the newer NP F550 7.2 volt 2600 milliamp battery that are both great on this unit. However, the Bonacell 8700 milliamp battery adds a fair amount of weight to the camera setup with the battery alone weighing 280 grams. This would be fine if used on a separate stand with a wireless system attached or if you desperately needed long run time on a trek or adventure shoot, especially with the option to be able to power your camera from the battery source through the dummy battery. With all that said though, I would recommend using the newer 2600 milliamp batteries as they only weigh in at 105 grams. This allows the setup to stay relatively light and streamlined with run time of around two hours. When a battery or power is supplied to the monitor, a red light will appear in the bottom right hand of the frame. This indicates standby mode. Once the screen is turned on, the red light will become yellow when no signal is detected. And once signal is detected, the yellow light will turn green. Just be aware that if you leave the screen on standby mode, it will slowly drain the battery, so be sure to take the battery out. You can turn the touchscreen function off of your monitor by pressing down once on the power on button and by pressing it again, you reactivate the touch functions. The monitor's 5.5 inch innovative touchscreen makes functionality fast and gets rid of complicated clunky buttons. The touchscreen allows you to easily have all its functions at your fingertips, which also allows you to zoom into your image freely with a pinch gesture. The monitor does still give you the option to use buttons, if that is preferred, through a scroll wheel with a push in function to choose your settings via the menu. If you prefer to use the touchscreen functions of the monitor, to access the menu, double tap on the left hand side of the screen and your menu will appear. There is also a shortcuts menu when you swipe up on the screen. The touchscreen also allows you to adjust your backlight brighter or darker by sliding your finger down or up on the left hand side of the screen. It also allows you to adjust your volume output level by sliding down or up on the right hand side of the screen. Once the menu tab has been opened, you will see six settings. The first being your exposure and assist features, followed by your markers menu, followed by your framing menu, followed by your color menu, your settings menu of the monitor, and your return button. The exposure and assist tab, once opened, will give you a series of options, including all waves, parade, vector, histogram, focus assist, audio meter, zebra, monochrome, false color, and return. All waves, once turned on, will show you your vector wheel, histogram, wire parade, and audio meter all at once. The parade tab will give you the options of RGB Parade, YUV Parade, Y Parade, and Off. The Vector tab and the Histogram tab have the options to turn them on and off and on and off. The Focus Assist tab, when turned on, will present to you the focus level and focus colour. The focus level can go from 1 all the way through to 10. The false colour options present to you the colours of red, green, blue, white and yellow. The audio meter gives you the option to turn it on, testing 1, 2, 3 and off. The Zebra tab, once opened, will give you the option of your Zebra value. This can be adjusted from 1 to 100. The Monochrome tab, once turned on, will give you the options of grey, red, green, and blue. The False Colour tab, once turned on, 
will give you the options of type 1 and type 2. The framing tab, once opened, gives you options of 9 grid, safety marker, center marker, marker mat, marker color, and return. The 9 grid tab gives you the option to turn it on and off. The safety marker tab, once turned on, gives you the options of 70, 80%, 90%, 16 by 9, 16 by 10, 4 by 3, 5 by 4, 1.85 to 1 and 2.35 to 1. The centre marker tab gives you the option to turn it on or off. The marker mat tab, once opened, will give you the options of 16 by 9, 16 by 10, 4 by 3, 1.85 over 1 and 2.35 over 1. When the marker mat is activated, it gives you the option to change transparency from 50%, 75%, 0%, 25%, and back to 50%. The marker color gives you the option to change the colors of your markers once they are turned on. From yellow, red, green, blue, white, and black. The third option of video settings, once opened, gives you the options of scan mode, video aspect, anamorphic mode, zoom times, freeze, pixel to pixel, and return. The scan mode gives you the option to turn it to under scan or over scan. The video aspect gives you the option to have it on auto, 16 by 9, 16 by 10, 4x3, 5x4, 1.85 over 1, 2.35 over 1, stretch, and also user, which allows you to change your video width and your video height. Anamorphic mode, once turned on, gives you the options of 1.25 times, 1.33 times, 1.5 times, 2 times, and two times magnified. The zoom times, once activated, gives you the option to go from 100% of your image, zooming in all the way to 300% of your image. The freeze option, once turned on, gives you the ability to freeze the picture on your monitor, even if you have moved your camera. And the pixel to pixel tab allows you to turn it on, and off. The color settings tab, once opened, gives you the options of HDR, LUT switch, LUT import SD, color temp, backlight, brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, sharpness, and return. HDR, once turned on, gives you the options of HLG 2020, HLG 709, and HLG P3. The LUT switch tab, once turned on, gives you a series of LUTs to choose from, from S log 2, S log 3, log C, and V log. Take note that if you have the RGB, YUV, or Y parade, the vector and or the histogram on while turning the LUTs option on, the parades vector and histogram will show the results of the LUT applied image. They will not show you what the image is doing pre-LUT. Think of the LUT option as a preview of what your image will look like post-edit or post-LUT. This is helpful if you have the LUTs in mind that you want to use for the final product. You can get your image pretty spot on with making the tweaks during the recording process. For those of you that don't know what a LUT is, it is a lookup table. It holds a set of numbers which are looked up by the software or hardware you are using in order to deliberately change the colors of an image. They are similar to presets, except presets can adjust a much wider range of an image's parameters. 
things like exposure, sharpening, and vignetting. LUTs target a narrower set of parameters like color and tone. The LUT imports SD tab, once turned on, will show you the LUTs that you have uploaded on your SD card. Scroll through the options and when you find the one that you like, click on it to import the 3D LUT file. If you do not have an SD card inserted, it will show up as an access fail. The color temp tab gives you the options to choose between 5600K, 6500K, 9300K and user which allows you to adjust your reds, greens and blues. Your backlight, brightness, contrast, saturation, hue and sharpness can all be adjusted from 0 all the way to 100. The settings tab, once opened, will give you the options of wheel, language, transparency, OSD time, auto mirror, volume, reset and firmware update. The wheel option gives you the choice to choose between the backlight or the volume. What this does is when the menu is not opened on your screen, you can adjust either the volume or the brightness via the menu wheel on the top of your monitor. The language option allows you to choose from nine different languages, including Russian, Italian, German, and English. The transparency option gives you the choice to choose between low, middle, or high. This adjusts the transparency of the menu bar on the left hand side. It will not adjust the backgrounds of the parades or the histograms. The OSD time or the on-screen display time allows you to change the time that the menu is up on the screen for. You can have it 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 25 seconds, always, 5 seconds or 10 seconds. The auto mirror tab gives you the option to turn it on or off. What this does if it is on is it allows you to rotate your screen 90 degrees and for the image to flip automatically when it gets to the other side. The volume tab allows you to change the output volume through your stereo headphone out from 0 all the way to 100. The reset button allows you to change your monitor to its default settings by switching to on. Just be sure that you turn your monitor off and back on again to apply the settings. The firmware update tab shows you the current version of firmware that you are running on your monitor. To change this, you will need to have an SD card inserted into your monitor with a current firmware update available. When you swipe up on your monitor screen, it shows you a shortcuts menu which allows you to turn your focus assist on and off, histogram on and off, audio meter on and off, parade functions of RGB, YUV and Y on or off, Vector on or off and all waves on or off. The screen has a gloss finish which does show some reflections and fingerprints in certain light but is nothing major that a quick wipe can't fix. The monitor does get a little warm after long uses but it's not so hot that you can't touch it. Overall, I think that the Fullworld F6 Plus is a great external monitor, especially for the price and what features it has built in. The monitor screen has no lag between what the lens captures to what the monitor shows. This is a great budget buy that should comfortably handle your needs for most environments, especially with the option to be able to wirelessly transmit the image with the use of the Mars 400 transmitters or those alike. Okay guys, that wraps up the review of the Fullworld F6 Plus 5.5 inch 3D LUT touchscreen 4K monitor. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. Also, please like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. It's always appreciated along with following my socials. I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. 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 Cheers, 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 cheers.